Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom. It's June once again, my absolute favourite month of the year. It's so beautiful here. Not only are all the trees and wildflowers in bloom, but I get to spend the long days outside enjoying the warmth of early summer and of course tending to my many veggies, some of which you can see behind me now. Uh, and with half an acre of vegetables to grow every year, that is a fair bit of work, it has to be said. But on days like this, it really doesn't feel like it, not to me. But today's video isn't about growing vegetables, at least not specifically. It's about ways to generate a small income whilst living on a small holding or a homestead, just like I do here in the west of Ireland. Or northwest of Ireland, as I keep getting told to say in the comments. So you may remember back in January, I published a video entitled The Pursuit of a Self-Sufficient Life, which was all about how to make self-sufficiency work in modern, livable terms. And one of the things um, which I really wanted to make clear in that video, to emphasize um, to anyone considering a similar move to the one which I made, was that you do need some income to make this lifestyle sustainable. You don't necessarily need as much money because the goal of a self-sufficient life, at least for me, and I think most people, is to try and provide as much for yourself as you possibly can. But you can't possibly provide everything. There are things like vehicle costs and especially living in a rural location, you really can't do without a car. And then of course you've got insurance and tax, fuel, and then there's things like internet, buying tools and equipment, maintaining them, health and vets bills, looking after these guys. However frugal and creative you are, some costs are just unavoidable. I once read an article um, many years ago, long before moving to Mossy Bottom, entitled How to be Gainfully Unemployed. Now, that title could be interpreted quite negatively. Just the word unemployed has a really negative stigma in most cultures which is wrong in my view. I don't consider myself unemployed because I work very hard. Um, in fact, I work harder than I've ever worked when earning a salary. I'm employed in my life, and I think that's all any of us should feel a responsibility to be. But this article was really interesting. It, it massively inspired me because it made me realize for the first time that you don't necessarily need a mainstream job to make enough money to live and to contribute to society in a meaningful way. It's possible to survive and give back by doing lots of small things well, really well, which I suppose if you think about it um, is exactly how our ancestors would have lived for thousands of years. They would have been Jacks and Jills of all trades. The goal, for me at least, is to find ways to provide just enough money to support the life that I want to live by doing the things which I love, which I'm passionate about. You'll probably never make it rich following any of the suggestions in this video, but that's not the point. It's not about that. Who needs riches when you get to do what you want to do every day? And if you're really lucky, even make that life pay for itself. This video is sponsored once again by the lovely people at Skillshare, which as well as having creative and practical courses on just about every subject you can imagine, is also a great place to learn about how to get paid doing the things you love, how to turn a passion into an income, and in doing so, how to work remotely, which is so relevant to everything I'm gonna talk about today. And here's a great example. Make a Living as an Artist, Strategies for Crafting Your Creative Business by Brooke Glazer. And this is one of the most uh, comprehensive and intelligently written courses I've seen. It's not about being an artist, but rather about turning a creative passion, whatever that might be, into a career, which is exactly what she's done. There are Skillshare courses on starting a small business, on marketing, on finding motivation, and even on thinking outside the box, which is so important. Finally, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. Okay, so I have seven ideas 
to throw at you today. And the first potential source of income on my list uh, is something which I've been doing myself since my second season here at Mossy Bottom. And that's selling produce, particularly fruit and vegetables. And I think growing organic food from the land is a huge motivation for most people uh, who want to move out to the country and live on a homestead or a small holding. So it's a pretty obvious thing to do. Now, there are many different options uh, in terms of making money from that produce. You could have a little stall like I do, selling food to passers-by at the end of your lane, uh, or you could venture into a vegetable box scheme, a CSA scheme, uh, which are definitely growing in popularity um, as people, at the moment at least, are becoming more conscious of the need to buy locally sourced food. Um, it is, of course, a lot more work though. That would be the major downside. Um, and there's a real danger that a business like that could take over your life. I've seen it happen to um, people I know. I think when setting up your own business, people tend to invest even more time than they would if they went uh, to a mainstream job working for someone else. But that's a balance that you'd have to figure out yourself. You could even have a pick your own field where people come and harvest your crop for you. I remember pilfering strawberries from my local pick your own strawberry field when I was a young lad. It was one of my favorite things to do in the summer. They seem to be a less common sight these days, don't they? Uh, maybe it's time for a comeback. I think there probably is an appetite for it. Strawberries are one of my absolute best sellers on my stall. Um, and I think that could be a particularly successful um, idea in a touristy location, perhaps on the edge of a town. Personally, my goal is only ever to grow the things I want to grow and enjoy growing and that I can eat myself. Still no garlic, folks. There never will be. <laughs> and then to sell the excess, which of course there always is through the summer, although the animals do eat a lot of it, I have to admit. And that makes me a modest amount of money on my little stall without in any way compromising my lifestyle, because for me, that's what it's about. Next, we have social media, be it traditional blogging, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube like me, um, or any of the other new social media outlets these days. Most of them have some way of monetizing your content once you reach a certain stage. First of all though, I have to say, uh, and you'll hear loads of other people saying this too because it's true, it is a misconception that you can make loads of money through social media unless you happen to be one of the tiny minority who have millions of viewers or subscribers. It's not something that scales well. So you have this huge quantity of people uh, in the middle that make very, very little and a tiny minority at the top that make a huge amount. Especially when you take into account the amount that's taken in fees and in taxes and other costs. And yes, for anyone wondering, every cent that I make through YouTube is taxed. But if you enjoy sharing your passions and your way of life with other people, be it through words, pictures, videos or any other medium, and are willing to do so with honesty and sincerity for the sheer pleasure of it, then you might be surprised, I certainly have been, by how much people are willing to get on board and support you in doing that. People are definitely attracted to alternative ways of life. So if you're thinking about, uh, or perhaps already living an alternative life yourself, and enjoy sharing that life with other people, um, without having the intrusion of the people coming to your home, then it's definitely a good option. And in today's world of high-speed internet down every country lane, it's also very doable. Even Mossy Bottom has recently been upgraded to 4G. We're 1G behind the rest of the world, but still, I can finally upload videos without having to drive into town. Now that's progress. One final point regarding social media. I never went into it with the intention of making money. From that very first video, um, it was all about trying to inspire and motivate others. Of course, if something which you love doing becomes a way to support the lifestyle which makes you happy, as it has done for me, then you're one lucky bugger, and I really feel that way myself. 
And in that situation, I think anyone would be mad not to grab hold of that as tightly as they can. But even if you don't make any money, you'll almost certainly make friends with shared values. And I think that makes it worthwhile too. Just be yourself and tell your story. Okay, so next on my list of ways to make an income on a small holding or homestead and a complete departure from social media is something that farmers have been doing for as long as farming has existed, and that's breeding animals. It's an area which is very relevant to self-sufficiency because animals can be a vital part of pursuing that kind of life. They work towards the same goals that you have while simply going about their day-to-day -day lives and being happy. Pigs plough, rabbits fertilise and mow, chickens lay eggs, ducks eat slugs and snails, every animal has a use. And of course, the chances are, if you're anything like me at least, you'll have a deep love of animals and want to incorporate them into your life anyway, just for the sheer pleasure of their company and watching their antics. Now, livestock breeding is definitely not something to go into lightly. It requires plenty of research uh, and an investment in things like housing, food, and the right environment for your critters to thrive in. It shouldn't be something you go into just to make money. That's not the point. Rather something that you do for the love of it, which can become self-supporting. In terms of what to breed, it really depends on how much land you have and of course where your interests lie. I purchased my Cooney Cooney pigs, which are right there next to me. You might hear some oinking uh, from a specialist breeder here in Ireland who absolutely adored his animals. And I personally sell chickens, ducklings uh, and young rabbits as pets, which is about my limit on an acre of land. But it does pay for their feed and their housing costs. I even know, believe it or not, a local alpaca breeder. It's amazing what you can find out here in the west of Ireland, the northwest of Ireland. In the context of a small holding, I definitely recommend choosing rare breeds, um, which perhaps escape the attention of commercial farmers. It's a great way to keep the breed alive, and generally they're also worth more money. And here's a great example right here. Uh, these are called Abacot Ranger Ducks, which is a rare British breed that was rescued by the Germans. And I introduced them here last year, and I'm trying for the first time this year to rear ducklings from them. Fingers crossed. Some of you, I'm sure, will be wondering what happened to my um, Indian runner ducks. Well, they're still alive and well, um, but they're not here at Mossy Bottom anymore. Um, I got really unlucky. They were all male, so um, I couldn't breed young from them. And also they were very destructive to the ground. It's very soft ground here, um, and they turned this area into a mud pit, which the Abacot Rangers don't do. They just have different habits. Um, so I donated them to someone living nearby, a friend of mine, who just wanted to keep them as pets and not breed from them. So they're still happy as far as I know, uh, but alas, not here at Mossy Bottom anymore. Here's another idea if you're a huge animal lover. How about setting up boarding for dogs, for cats, horses, alpacas, you name it. If you live near a town or a city uh, and have money to invest uh, in creating the facilities that you'll need, um, then this could be a great option for you. Of course, uh, if you take on too many animals, then a small business like that could potentially take over your life. So um, I suppose just like with selling produce, it's about finding the right balance to be happy whilst also paying the bills. Um, an idea which I had a few years ago um, was to create a kind of dog vacation where people, uh, people's dogs could stay with me and Moss roaming about the land uh, as we do, um, being taken on bike rides and treks through the forest, uh, which I think is a lot better than sitting in a kennel for two weeks while your owners enjoy cocktails on the beach. Um, alas, it never happened. Um, no inquiries, please. Um, but I'm sure there are many people out there who would pay a premium uh, for their dog to go on, you know, a vacation uh, while they do. So, you know, feel free to steal my idea. <laughs> So the next idea on my list is something which I have done myself in the past, and that's online teaching. With high speed internet so abundant now in rural and wild areas, uh, many people living as I do 
choose to use the skills that they've already acquired in life through jobs and training and education to earn a supplementary income through the internet. And the availability of high-speed internet in rural places is really quite a new thing. I honestly don't feel like the, the job market has quite caught up yet uh, with the fact that people living out here as I do can now do things like video conference. And the most obvious subject that one can teach is English, and there's definitely a huge demand for native English speakers. But wherever your expertise lies, there's a pretty good chance, I would say, that um, some people out there are willing to pay for personal tuition, especially in this, well, what will be a post-COVID age uh, in which we're all so much more familiar with the likes of Skype and Zoom. I predict online learning is going to be a burgeoning industry in the coming years. I reckon this is the time to get into it if it's something that interests you. And of course, there are myriad other ways to use the internet uh, to supplement your income. Many people these days uh, can work entirely from home. For me personally, any time sat in front of a computer is time I'd far rather be outside working with my hands. And you can see how much of that I do, uh, even in the Irish rain, which we get plenty of. So finding the right, um, you know, the right balance between free time and money uh, that you can potentially earn could be the challenge for anyone. Uh, taking the work from home option. Okay, on to the next potential income source. And one thing that I've noticed uh, through the volunteers who stay with me here at Mossy Bottom and also fellow smallholders and homesteaders that I've got to know over the years is that many people who aspire uh, or actually are already living this kind of life are really crafty. And I don't mean that they're all, um, you know, evil geniuses in the making more that they're really good with their hands and enjoy making things. Personally, I'd say I'm pretty good um, at creating things out of wood, be it cabins like the one behind me, which I made for my volunteers, or furniture or smaller things like jewelry boxes. But I know people out there um, who are really good at sewing, embroidery, leatherworking, bookbinding, um, even making jewelry. There are so many different options and crafts. Here's a few more obscure ones that I discovered when researching this video, if I can remember them. Um, clock making, stone carving, even carving small things out of stone, whittling, and that's something that I did plenty of as a lad with sticks that I found, usually to make spears and catapults and things like that. Um, but if you get good at whittling, you can uh, whittle everything from portraits to flutes to statues of fairies, you name it. Uh, basket weaving or other types of weaving. Um, how about this for a fun one? Puppet making. That would incorporate lots of different skills, wouldn't it? And of course, not forgetting the more mainstream crafts like photography and painting. Uh, one thing's for sure, uh, living in nature surrounded by plants and animals, if that's the lifestyle you create for yourself, I think you'll never be short of inspiration or subject matter. I think there's definitely a growing movement uh, towards handmade artisanal items um, in reaction, I suppose, against all the mass-produced products that we're so used to. If you look at a site like Etsy, uh, where I sold the Mossy Bottom calendars last year, uh, its sales grow year on year. And that's all from talented people sat at home practicing their particular crafts. And creating an online website couldn't be easier too, Gone are the days where you need to learn to code, uh, spending hundreds of hours trying to learn how to make the website yourself, or indeed uh, hundreds or thousands uh, paying someone else to do it for you. So the key, I believe, to making your particular craft pay, whatever that may be, is getting really, really good at it and having something unique that other people aren't doing. Um, so that what you're creating, I suppose, really stands out. And for that to happen, it's got to be something that you're absolutely passionate about and probably also have a natural aptitude for. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that you're instantly going to be that good. It might be just a case of putting in the hours, the learning, the researching um, and the practicing to get good. Um, and as with all potential income sources, selling handmade items isn't going to replace a full time job. Um, but it might just make you enough to make this kind of lifestyle work. Personally, I have a bit of a penchant for these guys. Can you see behind me? 
Um, so don't be surprised if you see a range of handmade mossy bottom gnomes one day, limited edition of course. As someone who loves working with wood, one of the things I've always wanted to do is create a tiny home. And I know, I know, I've got loads of other things to do first. I've got to finish uh, the stone cottage restoration and all the outbuildings. And that will, of course, be my home. Uh, but one day, when I've got the time, I'm going to take the chassis from this old caravan, uh, which is falling to bits. It was 25 years old when I bought it several years ago. Uh, but the chassis should remain in good condition and I'm going to build a tiny wooden home on top of it with a kitchen, a shower room uh, and of course a bed up in the attic space in the rafters. We're going to have exposed beams, there'll be a wood burning stove of course, lots of rustic features. Um, and that's just the sort of thing that I can happily pour hundreds and hundreds of hours into making. And what I might then do is park it somewhere beautiful on my little piece of land here in Ireland and rent it out as a kind of guest house during the summer months so that people could come and stay with me for, I don't know, a week and get the full mossy bottom experience. Again, I have to say it's a long way off, but you know, if you live or plan to live somewhere beautiful, surrounded by nature, or even just somewhere with animals and interesting things to see and do, then you might be surprised by just how appealing that could be to uh, paying visitors. So that's the next idea as a potential income source for your small holding or homestead, turning part of your land uh, into accommodation. And sites like Airbnb have really taken off in recent years because people are increasingly looking for unique places to stay. I think that's the key. If you can create an experience rather than just provide a bed and basic facilities, then it might just prove popular. And if you're worried about loneliness as well, moving to a more rural setting, uh, then it might be a great way to maintain social contact. You could even take it a step further, I guess, um, if you have a particular skill like we were talking about earlier, and you could teach in-house courses to people um, that are staying in your own accommodation. Cooking with wild foods, yoga, animal husbandry, permaculture, that's something that I fancy myself. Um, there are so many options for things you could teach. You've just got to pursue what you're passionate about. That's the key, because if you do that, it'll draw other people in. So there's seven potential income sources when living on a small holding. Of course, it's not an exhaustive list. There are many more things that you could do. And that's not even taking into consideration the potential to barter, trading things you have in excess for things that you need. There's definitely a community of people here in the west of Ireland that do that, which is great. Now, you may well be thinking, that's all well and good, and it sounds like a lot of fun, but compared to my mainstream job, uh, I just can't see your suggestions making much money. And that's probably true. But remember, the aim isn't monetary wealth. That's not why I'm here, to make money. It's quality of life. It's getting to do the things every day that I want to do. And having a way to support that financially, rather than making money being the goal. And making a move like this work will probably involve giving up a lot of things, especially if you're not coming into it with that much money, like me. New cars, holidays, I haven't had one of those myself for over a decade. Um, but then I don't crave holidays, I want to be here all the time. Um, gadgets, meals out, that kind of thing. But it can be done. Um, and you adapt, you adapt to your situation so that you're not craving those things anymore. You're craving time with your animals and um, the excitement of a new season, growing new things, tasting new foods. Um, it's really a question of wanting it badly enough to make the necessary compromises. And some people will, and some people won't. You have to be creative. You have to be determined. Uh, you have to be good at what you do, which takes commitment and research and patience. And more than anything, you have to be brave enough uh, to take a chance. It's sort of like that moment in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I apologize for the cheesy movie reference that anyone not from my generation won't get, but there's a moment in which Indy has to take that step onto the invisible path right at the end of the movie. He can't see where his foot will land, 
Um, but to get to the other side, he has to take a leap of faith. I love that moment. And he does, because the payoff is worth it. Uh, what a fantastic metaphor for, for quitting your job and moving to a small holding in the wilds. But the key point there is it has to be worth it. Okay, folks, enough of the cheesy metaphors. Good luck to each and every one of you. Whatever your personal path is, of course, it's going to be different for everyone. Maybe you're someone who's already living this type of life. Maybe you aspire to at some point in the future, but you're not ready yet. Maybe you just like watching others live this life from a distance. The future is yours to take, so make it a good one. Thank you, as always, for your support, be it through GoFundMe for the cottage restoration, Patreon, or just by watching my videos. For me, it's definitely you guys that make this life possible. From me and from Moss, bye for now. even on thinking outside the box, which is so important.